Well, up back to another face off. This is Maple Grove, Minnesota. And uh, also on the phone is my nemesis from Winnipeg, the Commish. Yeah. Well, you know, Commish, we really haven't discussed the topic this week, and maybe it's because I'm trying to stay away from you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I thought a good one would be this week is, you know, I've been infatuated with the LA Kings, and I figured, you know, talk about post-game celebrations and what you think about them. Oh, don't even get me started on those post-game celebrations. <laughs> That's why I decided to bring the topic. This is my time to kind of give you the gears. What, what are your oh. What are your issues with them, buddy? At the best of times, I can't stand the post-game celebration. By the way, I like to watch it, but it's just how the uh, the media or the the uh, those who cover it blow it up out of proportion, and uh, you know the way they talk about it, like it's. They, they go back to, to the history. 45 years ago, the L.A. Kings were created, and yada, yada. It's like reading, they're, they're covering the Bible or something here. And they're they're crediting everybody except the real people who deserve credit, which are the players that just won the cup. See, I, I, I disagree with you. And, and this might be very off topic, but, you know, when the Winnipeg Jets, if they ever get their day, it won't only be the media, be the fans talking about the first version of the Jets. Never winning the cup. It'll be talking about players. It'll be reminiscing about players. It'll be talking about, yes, the current version. It'll be talking about the fans. It'll be talking about the people of Winnipeg that put everything on their heart. Yes, it needed money. Yes, it needed great ownership. But the people of the team embraced them from the minute it went and it was official. So I disagree with you. I think it's nostalgic. I think it's important. I think I, – I, you know me. I'm, I'm a guy of history. I like to remember. Okay, I, no, hope when, I hope when Winnipeg wins their cup that Ducky, Steen, Randy Carlisle, all the former great Winnipeg Jets, Dave Ellett, who scored a double overtime victory against the Edmonton. Why did those guys get – hey, why did they get – I hope, the hope that they hoist the cup. I hope that they hoist the cup. I hope they're right on the ice. After every current player – has had their time. I hope those players are on skates and they are hoisting the cup. Yeah, there's the point. There's the point. The LA Kings win the win the Stanley Cup, and, and all of a sudden CBC is focusing on, oh, when's it's going to be so exciting to see Luke Robitaille hold the cup. Maybe 20 years ago when he played. But to see him raise the cup after he's been retired for 10 years or however many years he's been retired, and, and uh, yes, he has a front office job, and he's probably had some say in who's played for the team, but you know what? He did not win the cup. He did not lace up the skates. I, you're you're missing this. He he's a, an alum of the team. I don't know if you know what alum is. Do you know what that means? Is that a big word for you? I'll give you an alum upside the head. Okay. It it means something. It obviously meant something to Luke Robitaille. You know, I I I'm one. It doesn't mean anything to them. I'm saying I, that I'm one who says go for it. It's the same thing. When you retire my team's player's jersey, I'm there to watch. Okay? When you, when you, when you enter him into your team's Hall of Fame, I'm there to support. It's the same thing. Why should they, especially if it's been 10 years ago, why should you retire their jersey? The current players are playing. Should they wear that number? Why should you put them in a Hall of Fame anyway? What's the big deal about that? The bottom line is what makes sports and especially ho a hockey, in my mind, great is not only the play, not only the playoffs, not only the players, it's the history. I can go back and I can remember games that I watched, like I just mentioned, Dave Ellett scoring double overtime victory. It builds memories, it builds, I think teams build on well, the What does that have to, I, I agree with history and teams and remembering games and certain players and and uh, celebrating their, their contributions to the team, but not the moment the team wins the cup. It wasn't Save the moment. For another time. I don't know what you're watching. I, I watched NBC. Well, I was watching CBC with your buddy Ron McLean. And well, I rest my case on Ron McLean. Well, no, I don't think it's just Ron McLean. I think it's the whole. Ron uh, McLean used to be good. I used to enjoy the guy. He's either flipped his lid, lid and he's gone AWOL, or he's trying to do something purely for the ratings. 
I don't know which one it is. I'm not going to venture a guess. Definitely not for the ratings because it doesn't help. It doesn't even make for a watchable. Uh, but he, he's coming up with outlandish things. Uh, okay, look, NBC. Yes, they meant they mentioned a number of times. It's you know 45 years, whatever many years um, since the team had been in LA, never won a cup. Marcel Dion being a big part of the cup in the late 70s and some of the scoring seasons he had. Um, they mentioned Wayne Gretzky in the 90s and probably the turning point for the organization and Luke Robitaille. One yeah, thing I turning point for the organization, they 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 sold half their team for the for him. <laughs> well, you laugh, but I'm saying they they almost won the cup. They got to Game Seven, but they didn't win the cup with him. They didn't okay? win the so, cup, but I don't I don't even know where they favored. I know Montreal was pretty good that year. Um, I think the fact the fact is that you have other opportunities, other times to celebrate those people, those players, those people who helped build the organization. But after 22 guys, and I'll even credit, obviously, Dean Lombardi and their their management for making that trade to get Jeff Carter, which seemed to put them over the top. They drafted Jonathan Quick. They're, those guys were an integral part of the victory. I don't need to hear about the... I who, just, oh, we had Marcel Dion who scored 100 points eight, eight years out of his 15 years in the I, NHL. I, and Rogi Vachon looked great in that purple uniform. He would look great hoisting the cup. Well, he never won a cup. He doesn't deserve to hoist it. You know what? You know what? I, I'm i right. You're wrong. You know I'm right. That's you're the, talking some right. nonsense. They have other opportunities to do it. They have far and few between the opportunities of winning the Stanley Cup to share it with other players. And I guarantee you. The players on the ice and say, well, get off the F and ice because you weren't there to score the goals. You didn't win the victory. I mean, they embrace you know what? That's a good idea. If I was on the ice, I probably would have slashed Luke Robitaille. They, they know the history. They watch the same players. They know what it means to the organization, former players, current players, their fans, and they're sharing it with everybody. And that's what a Stanley Cup is all about, is sharing it with those that mean something to you and the organization. I'll tell you what, Luke um, – not Luke Robitaille, Jer- Jeremy Roenick, you know, been on – um, NBC Sports, and he played for the Phoenix Coyotes. And I tell you what, he he wanted them to win the cup. You know, he has an affiliation to Phoenix. I think he lives there. Um, I I can tell you, I it's bet you. The difference between a player wanting them their team Phoenix, to win the cup because they Phoenix played for them. Coyotes win the cup. Jeremy Roenick is one of the first people on the ice. He tells the, he probably tell the studio, I gotta get down there, and he probably gets. Well, he shouldn't be on the ice because he had nothing to do with them winning the cup. Bottom line is that's what sports is, especially the play. I I'll say this. The even, bottom line is even more right. the fans that that were there to to be part of the celebration. It's the former fans, the former players that mean more because they actually put on the skates and they did it. Now, what I think I agree with you. Everybody should have been shooed out of the arena, including their fans. Like, okay, it's done, it's done, it's over. <laughs> Good, congratulations to the kids. Now get the f out of the arena. You're not wanted because you weren't on the ice to do it. You know, they, they should have let you hoist the cup, too, just because you, you've been a Kings fan since uh, Gretzky was traded there. You know, you deserve to hoist the cup. That's a lie. I, I was with you watching against a, uh, a, with a, at a friend's house who was a big Kings fan, even though he probably didn't know much about hockey, okay? And we were Montreal Canadiens fans. So we're looking back. We were ecstatic when Montreal won Game 7, all right? So I wasn't a Kings fan. Even more so why my argument makes sense is how I do understand what it means to the Kings. It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking for Gretzky and for the rest of the team. On that note, we're never going to agree. But I, I think you're wrong. I think you share it. Come on, dude. You're from Canada. You're supposed to be a socialist. We're all about sharing, dude. What's this about being selfish? There's no – I'm not saying you can't share. All I'm saying is focus on the right thing when the team wins the cup. Focus on the players that were there to win it. Don't focus on the fact that Wayne Gretzky was in the building and dropped the puck a few, you know, dropped the puck for them. It, you it know what? I, 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 I disagree. We're not going to agree. But I'll say this. I guess I'm the real community guy. I'm the guy about sharing, right? Yeah, well, go go share your love with the uh, someone who cares. I'm right. You're wrong. And by the way, thank you to uh, SoundJ.com for uh, providing the music. All right, and also if you want to if you want to see more uh, podcasts and more arguments between me and this guy, um, you can go to sportmentry.com and that is www.sportmentary.com. Look for the Face Off tab and you can uh, see links to former um, podcasts. On that note, we will join you next week where I'm sure uh, him and I are going to disagree again. Have a good one, sport. Take care.